So as I was out walking my dog, I checked my phone, I had an email from a student with this question. And I thought about it while I was walking around, I thought, I'm really excited by this question because there's some ideas here that I want to explore a little bit. All right, so it's very intimidating, first of all, because we've got this equation of a plane. And the moment we start talking about equations of a plane, people try to start thinking in three dimensions. And when they do that, they abandon drawing pictures. And so the first thing I really want to make clear here is that in a question like this, you really still want to draw pictures. Because even though we're in a, a, th a plane in three dimensions, planes themselves are two-dimensional. So this piece of glass that I write on, or a piece of paper that you write on, is a plane in two dimensions. And it doesn't matter whether it's tilted like this, or tilted like that, or tilted like that. They all still behave the same way. So we can still draw this. On this plane, I'm going to draw an origin. I'm going to draw a point, and I'm going to call it point zero 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 because that's the origin in three-dimensional space. Uh, there's another point, 2, negative 1, negative 1. Now, I'm going to do something weird here. I don't care where I put this because it's not. it doesn't matter to the question. I'm just going to call this point A here, and that's point 2, negative 1, negative 1. Now, from a certain perspective, this drawing is accurate. It doesn't matter. It's in three-dimensional space. If you walked around the right way, this drawing's accurate. All right, and then there's some other point, B, that's going to make an equilateral triangle. And it should be obvious, now that we've drawn this picture, that on this plane, point B, point B could be here-ish, or point B could be here-ish. So I'm looking for the point B here, and I'm looking for the point B here. And that's going to make one equilateral triangle there, and one equilateral triangle there. So two answers. So an origin, point A, point B, and we've got another point B over there somewhere. Now, I've reached the limit of my three-dimensional reasoning. I cannot easily picture what point B would be and what point B would be. So I'm going to have to start thinking a little bit algebraically. Now, point B, it's made up of coordinates. Let's call them coordinates P, Q, and R. And here's the next thing that I'm really excited about with this question, and that is that because three dimensions is hard to think in, a lot of students abandon the meaning of this equation, x plus y plus z equals zero. But this equation of a plane, it has a real meaning, right? What it means is that the plane is made up of all of the points whose three coordinates, in this case p, q, and r, add up to make zero. So for instance, the origin is on this plane because zero, plus zero plus zero equals zero. The point A, two, negative one, negative one, is on this plane because two plus negative one plus negative one equals zero, which of course means that this point here, P plus Q plus R equals zero. And people really, I think, forget that when it comes to equations of planes. That's what it means coordinates that satisfy this equation. So I have an equation. I know that the point P plus Q plus R in this equation will equal zero. And that to me should be your next big hint. You've got three unknowns and one equation. If you had two more equations, you'd have three unknowns and three equations and you'd be home free. So equilateral triangle. That means that this distance is equal to this distance is equal to this distance for these to be equilateral. I'm ignoring this other B. Algebraically, um, it's probably going to fall out somehow. So let's talk vectors. We've got vector OA here, and it's easy to find the magnitude of vector OA if we want to. The magnitude of OA, this is a position vector pointing to A, so it's just going to be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. So we have the magnitude of OA equal to root 6, now, magnitude of OB will also have to be root 6 because this is an equilateral triangle, and the magnitude of vector AB will also need to be root 6. Now, how do I express vector OB? Thankfully, OB is just a position vector, so it is literally just PQR. So, the magnitude of vector PQR will be equal to the square root of P squared plus Q squared plus r squared. Hmm. And the magnitude of this needs to be root 6, which means that root 6 
equals root p squared plus q squared plus r squared, which means that 6 equals p squared plus q squared plus r squared. And that means that I have a second equation. Let's take that and put it up there. And finally, I need to work with this vector AB, and this is kind of the one I've been dreading a bit. Vector AB is equal to vector OB minus vector OA. So OB is P, Q, and R minus vector OA, which is 2, negative 1, negative 1. So that means that vector AB is like P minus 2, Q minus minus 1, which is plus 1, and R minus minus 1, which is R plus 1. But what I really want is to know the magnitude of that. So we know that root 6 is going to be the magnitude of AB, root, and now we've got this horrible thing. It's like P minus 2 um, squared plus Q plus 1 squared plus R plus 1 squared. Get rid of those square roots because they're a bit annoying. So I did a bit more than I intended there. I got rid of the square roots. I expanded all of the brackets. I sort of grouped them together. P squared plus Q squared plus R squared minus 4P plus 2Q plus 2R. Um, all right, where to from here? I feel like this is a bit of a mess. But like, all right, let's take that. Let's drag that up there and let's get rid of all the other stuff. So what we have now is three equations, three unknowns. So we should be able to get to the answer here. So uh, let's call this equation one, equation two, equation three. What I'm going to do is sub equation two into equation three in a particular way. P squared plus Q squared plus R squared equals six. We can see P squared plus Q squared plus R squared there. So I'm going to sub the number six into there. So six minus four P plus two Q plus two R equals zero. All right. I don't know if that's helpful or not. I've kind of used equation two now. So now I need to use equation one in some way. So I think I'm going to take this equation and just rearrange it a little bit and just make it uh, six equals um, 4p minus 2q minus 2r. So just a quick rearrangement there. And now I'm going to take this p plus q plus r and multiply it by negative 2. When I take this and multiply it by negative 2, I get um, negative 2p, negative 2q, negative 2r equals 0. And now I can use like the method of elimination here. 4p minus minus 2p is going to be 6p, um, negative 2q, minus minus 2q is going to be 0, uh, negative 2r minus minus 2r is going to be 0, and 6 minus 0 is going to be 6. All right, so now 6p equals 6, so p equals 1. That value right there is equal to the number 1. Now to say I'm at least mildly surprised by that, I'm a little bit upset because I thought, I was hoping I'd get two answers for P because I've got a B sitting there and a B sitting there. I'm still hopeful, however, let's see how things turn out. So I think that that's one. Maybe that coordinate is also one and Q and R will come out different. Who knows? All right, so I'm going to get rid of this and I'm just going to know that P equals one. So now that I know that, I might just be able to use equation one and two written as one plus Q plus R equals zero and 1 squared, which is 1, plus q squared plus r squared equals 6. And I should be able to solve those simultaneously. So this equation implies that q equals negative 1, negative r. So I can sub negative 1, negative r right into here. When I do that, I see a glimmer of hope because I see a quadratic, which means that those r's might have two solutions. And it looks like we do have two solutions here r minus 1, r plus 2, that means that r is going to be either um, positive 1 or uh, negative 2. So 1 comma something comma um, negative 2. Okay, and we're really finished here now because we know uh, this point is 1 something 1, we know that this point is 1 something negative 2. If I put in 
um, 1 in for P plus Q plus R, if I put 1 plus something plus 1 equals 0, the something there must be negative 2. And if I put 1 plus something plus negative 2 in there, um, the something must be 1. 1. All right, so we are finished. The coordinates of B are either 1, 1, negative 2 and 1, negative 2, 1. Good question.